Welcome back everybody. Today we're getting into this little revolver right here from Taurus. This is their 856 revolver and this is a rear introduction. Taurus, from what I understand, used to make these years ago, stopped making them and then brought them back again in 2018. I think, just my personal opinion, I don't know anything about it, but I think it's probably in a direct response to the Colt bringing their Cobra back, which is also a 38 Special all steel um, six shot revolver. So I think they kind of wanted to compete with it and offer a budget offering that had the same capabilities in terms of uh, capacity. So it's out. I got one in for review and we've been shooting it here for about three months now. And uh, what we're gonna do today is let the dogs take a look at it, of course, first, make sure it gets their seal of approval. And uh, then after that, we'll get into the details of the revolver and then sort of what I think of it overall, how my experience has been and all of those sorts of things. here at the butt of the revolver and sort of work our way up. The grips that come on the revolver are Taurus's own factory grips. They're rubber and I find them to be very ergonomic for a little revolver of this size. I have very large hands as those of you guys who watch the channel a lot know and um, you guys can see I can kind of get a little bit of engagement right down here on this bottom piece of the revolver with a normal firing grip. Now I fire my revolvers like this. Um, some of you guys use different uh, thumb techniques there for revolvers, but this little edge here is very nice, uh, particularly if you do use that type of grip for revolvers, and you also can easily reach the hammer should you choose to do so in single action. The grips are the same on both on the left and the right side, so uh, left-handers rejoice. I know some revolvers have features on the left side of the revolver that aren't on the right and the lefties always get mad. Uh, that is not the case here with this little wheel gun. Continuing on up, we do have our little cylinder release here and this one, like Smith & Wesson type of revolvers, does push forward and then releases out. And you guys will see there, you do have those six cylinders that sort of separate this revolver from a lot of other offerings out there on the market, but it's positive. You guys can hear there as soon as you push it forward, it does come out and you can feel the tension release. Also, you'll see when you click the cylinder back in, it clicks right back out there, very positive. And then the cylinder locks up, of course. Our hammer here is a spur type of hammer. It has good texturing on there. Should you want to cock it, like I mentioned earlier, and or decock it, it gives you good traction on there. This revolver here does have a transfer bar safety in there. And for those who aren't familiar, that transfer bar safety basically is going to prevent the revolver from being uh, fired should you drop it like this. Um, in order to actually, uh, rather in order for the revolver to actually fire, you have to pull the trigger which that's going to disengage that transfer bar, as you guys see right there, letting the hammer go forward and strike the firing pin, as you guys see there. The sights on the revolver are pretty rudimentary here on the rear. We do have a square notch uh, sight pitcher. It is built right into the frame of the revolver and you can get down forward to that front sight. The front sight is black, but it has the serrations on there. Uh, the same will be true for the stainless steel uh, variety of this revolver. I should mention that this one here is made out of carbon steel and it has that blued finish. And then the uh, stainless steel one, of course, is going to be made out of stainless steel with a stainless finish. Uh, that one there is going to run a couple more dollars, which we'll get into in terms of price, but that will have the stainless finish there on those sites as well. Uh, they're very rudimentary sites, but I tested this out uh, with 130 grain uh, Federal HST and we had zero issues shooting at 15 yards. It was point of aim, point of impact with that particular load, and that load is my favorite uh, personally, uh, 38 special load. So I guess for me that works out well, but definitely it's going to get you close with just about any load. Uh, the barrel is straight, as you guys can see there. As you look at it, it's not crooked. There's definitely revolvers out there that have crooked barrels when they actually put them in there. Uh, this one there is not the case. It's right on, which definitely aids in the accuracy downrange. The trigger on this revolver is pretty good. The double action is relatively smooth. I've all said that about Taurus. They do have pretty good double action triggers, particularly on their smaller guns. It's definitely not lightweight at all. We'll measure it here in just a second, but as you guys can see, for a revolver, it's pretty smooth overall for not being like, you know, a super worked over action. And then the single action is excellent as all revolvers are. Uh, you can see the trigger is all the way set to the rear and you just touch it 
and that trigger breaks. Now the single action is probably not as good as like a Smith & Wesson for those of you guys who are familiar with that, one of their J-frames, but the double action is definitely better in my opinion, at least the current production ones will get. We'll pull out the trigger scale there to actually measure this one and see how it's actually pulling. If we can get a good reading. Sometimes it's a little bit harder than other times. Uh, actually looking at that one right there, it broke right above 10 pounds, so I'm guessing 11 pounds. This scale does go out a little bit further. So if it was 12 or something like that, it would actually show it here on the single action pull. We're right at four pounds there, as you guys can see. So again, with this uh, Timney trigger gauge, we're 11 and four pounds in terms of trigger pull. But with the double action, one thing I said it a million times, that's more important than pull weight on double action is going to be the smoothness. For a small revolver, this one is not bad at all. The cylinder of the revolver is made out of steel, just like the rest of it, of course. And uh, as you guys can see there, it does have the flutes all the way around to reduce the weight a little bit. This particular revolver on my scale weighs in at 22 ounces. And uh, we'll roll in the rest of the size specs just so you guys can get an idea of that. But we'll do some comparisons here in just a second for a better idea of it. It spins freely. Um, as you guys can see there, it releases the shells freely. No issues at all in terms of uh, both here on the actual reviewing table or out on the range. It definitely kicks them out without issue. Our uh, cylinder release here, or rather our uh, shell release is uh, shrouded here up underneath the barrel to protect it from any sort of impact, which is nice. I do like that feature. Um, it's not a huge issue if it's not you know, shrouded. A lot of J frames are out there that have been going strong for years, but I do prefer it. Just adds a little bit of security to that somewhat fragile part. And the barrel out front here is going to be two inches long. So some of the uh, small frame revolvers out there are going to be two and a quarter. Some are an inch and seven eighths, an inch and three quarters, whatever. This one's sort of in the middle right there at two inches. Speaking of size, we do have a few options here on the table. Of course, the one that people are probably going to associate this revolver with the most is going to be this one right here. And this is uh, the Taurus Model 85. These come in both stainless and the ultralight versions that we have here. The ultralight uh, is much lighter. This one here comes in right at 16 and a half ounces, I think on my scale, or 17, again, versus the 22 here. That makes a big difference with a small revolver in terms of how it feels. Um, with regular 38 special loads, not a big deal for a more experienced shooter, uh, but if you're gonna use 38 uh, Special Plus P, this steel frame soaks it up much, much better um, in terms of just the shooting experience. Not that it's terrible in this, but it's just much softer here with the all steel frame. The biggest difference though, in terms of carrying these two revolvers, is going to be this right here. Of course, with the 856 versus the 85, we do have an additional chamber in there. So that's going to be a little bit wider. We'll roll the numbers in here so you guys can check it out. But that, I think, for a lot of folks, is going to be the big deciding factor is that width, right? So is that additional, I guess, depending on how you do the math, 20% or 17%? Is it worth that size difference there with the cylinders in terms of concealability? Well, really that's up to you guys to decide, but that's how they stack up size-wise. Uh, kind of another one to take a look at here is the Smith & Wesson Model 60. Again, an all steel uh, revolver. However, this one's chambered in 357, so it's a little bit heavier, but just size-wise, you guys can get an idea sort of how they stack up there. Pretty similar overall. Of course, this one doesn't have the exposed hammer. And then kind of one that you guys have seen before here on the channel before, of course, is the uh, Judge. This is a big Mamma Jam revolver. So this is the three inch version. And you guys can see there's no comparison. That Judge just dwarfs it. So it kind of gives you an idea of why folks like these small revolvers are very easy to conceal, um, particularly with the steel frame here. They're relatively easy to shoot well also, which a lot of people do like. Since we mentioned carrying the revolver, I guess we'll get into that here real quick. Uh, there are a ton of holsters that will fit the uh, 856, even with that wider cylinder. In fact, most of them that will fit the 85 that you guys just saw will fit the 86, just depending on fit. Now, this one here uh, is a Phobos, of course, it's a paddle holster, nothing fancy at all. But I think a lot of people that are looking at budget guns might look at budget holsters as well. So I just kind of wanted to show that here. Um, but this one here is actually, if you were to look this skew up here for Phobos, it's going to say that it fits the uh, Ruger LCR. So it's a five shot, 38 special, but this one here fits in perfectly. As you guys can see, it protects the trigger and uh, the hammer there is still exposed, draws out nice and smooth. And I actually have a few of these Phobos holsters and I, the reason I do, uh, for those who are wondering, <laughs> is because I actually use a Phobos ankle holster um, in the winter when I'm wearing pants, often as a backup gun. So um, it's strapped around the ankle. It's a very good little holster. It works just fine. And um, I think that, in that role, with ankle carry anyway, is one of the areas where it's absolutely not gonna be a big deal to have that bigger cylinder. Um, you know, if you're carrying in a pocket, 
maybe. You're gonna have a little bit more printing for sure. Um, might be an issue, might not be, depending on your build and how you dress, but on the ankle, in my opinion, it doesn't matter at all in my experience. So just something to consider there. I think we covered all the details that we can on this little revolver outside of performance, so we'll get into that. In terms of reliability, we've had a grand total of zero issues, so it can't do any better than that. We got right about 450 rounds of 38 Special, the majority of that just being standard pressure, uh, free munitions, and then, of course, some of that Federal HST like we talked about as well, and uh, it shot all of it just fine with no issues. The timing is good, um, it locks up nice and solid. There's really nothing to complain about in terms of performance of this revolver. I'm not a huge fan of the finish, but it's a budget gun, right? So uh, we'll get into the price here in just a second, but they do offer the stainless version for a couple bucks more, and I guess we'll get into price right now. Uh, this one here, if you look around on the internet for this uh, blued version, cheapest I found it today, just looking around, was over at Big Daddy Unlimited, it was like 245 and then uh, over for the stainless one was 10 to $15 more on normal websites that aren't membership programs. Uh, they're generally going to be 280 somewhere in that range if you guys are, are looking for a good deal. So in terms of value, I think there's a lot there. A lot of folks like the simplicity of revolvers but don't want to pay 400 bucks ish for a Smith & Wesson. Um, so this offers some value there, especially if you can get it around $250. That's really a lot of value. And uh, a lot of folks are going to like the six shot capacity. That six shots versus five is significant. Uh, should you need it, it's going to be the most important thing uh, you've ever needed in your life. So that definitely is uh, a big factor for some folks. However, some folks don't like the size. So it really is up to you guys to decide. And um, on that note, up to you guys to decide. I just kind of want to talk about Taurus in general. So I've done probably four or five different Taurus reviews here on the channel. If you guys have actually watched them, you'll see that two of those guns had problems. One had to go back to the factory. Um, so I, I tell you guys here how this stuff works. Um, and this one, again, has had a grand total of zero issues. I think there's a lot of people out there that just want something on a budget that works. The Taurus revolvers, at least in the last three or four years, have had a pretty good reputation uh, for good quality control and good performance. Um, this one here would sort of mirror that. So, um, you know, when I review stuff that costs $2,000, people say, oh, it's just Gucci stuff, nobody can afford it. But then when I bring something affordable to the table, a lot of folks say, oh, it's junk, it's crap. So, uh, generally speaking, the truth is somewhere there in the middle. Uh, this one here I think would fall in that category. It seems to be a good value from everything I've seen. So I wouldn't have any problems carrying it. Now, you know, would it be my choice uh, versus all the different options I have out there? Probably not. Probably wouldn't be my first choice, but I feel comfortable if I was carrying it for sure. So that really is about all you can ask out of a budget gun, at least in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the revolver, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.